but he's in the ground. There's four in the ground. It could be four or five furs. Usually four fur, the reversible. It means you can travel both ways. You go down the field, you turn the plow over, and you can come back up again. It leaves the field level. You've no stopping and starting. You'd start at the longest, straightest point, and you just go up and down the field, and then you finish right and round the edges. And some of them have an open mould board. It's going through the soil fairly rapidly and turning it over fairly quickly. Covering the acreage there, like, yeah. acre per hour, you know, that way. It's getting the acres covering it, the area. Right. That's the idea, the, the four furs, uh, the sub of them, it can be five or whatever, but you're governed by the weight as well. It gets to a stage where the plow gets heavy. You need a bigger tractor, then the, like the, you can see in that field, there is part of it that is actually quite steep. Uh, it was it was very sort of sporadic this year. It was different days and the wet weather. They were starting and stopping, you know. So that way, that's stubble ground he's playing there. That's ground that has been in barley last year, and then that's him playing it for the potatoes. The grass it gets the, the soil broken up. If you're going out of grass, especially if it has been in grass a long time, it takes a lot of labour to break it up. Whereas the barley. You're cultivating for it, and then it's got another year, winter. You see, you can't plough before the winter now. You plough just before the crop. It used to be you'd have ploughed, and then the weather would have broken down, or would have helped to break it down, but the climate's getting wetter, so it doesn't really work the same. It's regulations as well. You have to, you know, for erosion and that there, and then for leaching, for you're spreading fertilizer and manures and stuff. So they plough it, and then they come in, and the bed form it, they put it up on a big ridge and then they run a machine through it to take the stone out of it and that's to help for the harvest and then they put the stone into a path where they're going to travel for spraying the crop for weeds and for the blight and then for harvesting time that gives them access as well but it does disturb the structure of the soil a bit it leaves the rest of the field pure soil there's no stone in it for drainage and stuff planter comes in then after they have it they rotivate it and they've adapted the soil to give them the two ridges. The modern harvester now can harvest two drills at a time, two ridges. Ideally, as short a period as possible, you know, you're, you're talking a couple of weeks or that there. You know, you could come in, you could have it in days even if the soil type was suitable. But it would be raw, it would be sticky. You don't want it sticking to the tractor wheels. If it's not, if you can drive through it and the soil's not sticking to the wheels, you can work away there. It usually works all right. And then you can see there, if you're in a coastal area, maybe a bit towards the backs of the hedges or whatever, there could be areas maybe it had puddled from the previous crop. If they're turning somewhere, or they get, if there's a bit of an incline and they get stuck, they leave wheel tracks, they fill with water or whatever, you do that way, so you do that sort of thing. If you wait till it's all perfect, you sort of have to go with your gut. They come in with the ridges, that's just a thing. It's the opposite of what you're forming, so it goes through the soil like a boat nearly, sets it out and then you have, the, you have three, and that makes your two ridges. Possibly growing for supermarket or growing what the old market saying used to be boiled baker stew but the Morris paper would be a good one for an all round potato stores well average crop you could get some would be a bigger crop the potato size is another thing you'd have standard it would be a bigger potato more for the chipping job or the baking you're going for a, a general use potato Name's Gareth Horner, Coach Road Cumber, right in the drumlands of County Down. The family's been here maybe over 300 years farming in the round Cumber, so 
Well, we've started to come by early, say maybe 22nd of May, so this is probably our fourth week and it's been a good harvest, like there was a bit of a drought but the rains come there like maybe say two weeks ago and then things is bulking out a wee bit better now, but it's, it's mostly we sell our potatoes for your shop here, so we're, we'll have to dig fresh every morning and there's <coughs> sold that day and then we'll go dig more the next day sort of thing. At the moment these ones on the ground, are these are home guards, but we usually start off a potato uh, dundas, which would be a, maybe a wee bit earlier, and then we, we would cover the dundas with a fleece, so that would definitely bring them two to three weeks earlier. Very early year this year actually. One harvest, we will put them into ton crates, and then stack them in with plenty of sheds there, plenty of storage, so we'll put them maybe five high, and they're stored in the shed nearly all that we've had. We are actually finished the last of the Navin's potatoes there this week, so. No, no cold store, just natural environment, so kept cool in the, the back shade there. Today we're dug in September, but this time of year those early potatoes only keep, you need to dig them daily, but those main crop potatoes, you can dig them in October and they'll keep right through to about March, April, and as I say, we dug, we've sold the last of those nabbins there this week, so they've kept the July. You know.